if the New York Islanders had to trade one of their top two prospects to get that elusive goal scorer, who would you prefer to give away and why? We'll discuss that, plus your responses to our poll and survey about the team's reverse retro jerseys featuring the Fisherman logo. We've got that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family. And thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show. But first, if you've got something on your mind that's Islanders related, feel free to send us an email. The email address lockedonislanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for instant insight and analysis. And it's always great to interact with Islanders fans, game time or anytime. So please feel free to get in touch and, uh, you know, via Twitter. And, uh, you know, great to talk a little Islanders hockey with everybody. So wanted to start today, got a a very interesting email, Matt uh, sending the email. uh, And, you know, Matt uh, from Mass, uh, from Massapequa, really a good question. So I wanted to sort of address this on today's show. Hey, Gil, if we have any chance of The scoring forward, as you've said, we probably have to give up a top prospect. That leads me to Atu Ratu and William Dufour. Which would you give up out of the two? I really have no clue, and I'm curious to see if you had a particular choice and why that particular player. Well, Matt from Massapequa, first of all, thank you so much for the email. And this, I think, is a very interesting question. And my answer initially has got to be this. It depends. And I know that's a cop out and I am going to give you a a distinct answer, but obviously, you know, to me, I don't want to give up either one, but you're going to have to give up at least one of them to get, if you're talking about a Patrick Kane or a Vladimir Tarasenko or, or any of those goal scorers that we've talked about over the last few, you know, months, really. Uh, if we're talking about a trade. So, you know, I don't want to give up either, but obviously you're going to have to give up one. First rule in my mind, don't give them both up. Unless you're getting a young, talented player on a favorable contract with a long amount of years left, then I don't want to give up both of them. But I would be willing to give up either one of them if the deal is right. Now, that being said, if push comes to shove right now, I would rather trade do four than Atu Ratu. And I'll tell you why. This New York Islanders team is built to win now. So many of these players, and we've discussed this on the show, are on the other side of 30. Brock Nelson, Anders Lee, Josh Bailey, uh, Semyon Varlamov, uh, all three members of the identity line, Sezikis, Martin, Clutterbuck, uh, you know, now Scott Mayfield is 30. So, you know, this is an older team. And I think that Atu Ratu is closer to being NHL ready than William Dufour. 
I think that Ratu might even be able to help you at the end of this season and into the playoffs this season. Whereas Ratu is pro, uh, well, whereas Dufour is probably another year away from really being ready uh, to, to to join the NHL and 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 contribute on a regular basis. And why? Well, here's here's the thing. William Dufour is 6'2", 215 pounds. And while I think he has the potential to be a pretty good goal scorer in this league, the bigger players who are going to rely on their size usually take longer to develop than the smaller players, the guys who are not going to be power forwards. So Dufour is probably another year away as compared to Atu Ratu. And he has the type of body that and the style of play that leads me to believe that he probably will be needing a little more seasoning than Ratu. And, and the other thing is this, Ratu was a first-round talent who slipped to the second round because he had a, a, a bad year the year before he was drafted. Dufour was a fifth-round pick. So obviously, initially, scouts viewed him as more of a uh, value. Now, Ratu is 6'2 also, but he, he weighs less. He's 190 pounds. Ratu is also a, a center, but I think whereas Dufour plays the wing. But I think that Ratu is somebody who can help this team sooner. And as a result, because this team is a little older, I think that if you trade Dufour, that's not going to change this year and next year. And so let's say you add, just for argument's sake, Besser or Tarasenko or Kane, you add a wing you have Ratu available as depth for center. Uh, depending on who you trade away, there may not be necessarily room for him, but let's say someone gets hurt. Ratu can step in sooner, I think, than do four and give you something positive down the stretch and in the playoffs. I think by the time do four is ready, and that may not be till next year or the year after the hockey news uh, I believe said 2023, 2024 was the earliest he would be ready for full-time NHL duty. I, I think Ratu might be ready this season, next season at the very latest. So for that reason, with a team with so many older players in need of a little youth and a little spark, I would rather trade Dufour and hold on to the finish forward who... I think has a long-term higher upside and can probably help you sooner. Now, that being said, I think Dufour is more of a pure goal scorer. And, you know, he does play wing. So, you know, if you're trading away uh, Anthony Bavillier and you think Dufour might be ready to contribute this year, maybe, you know, Dufour has room to step up if you trade away a player who uh, plays the wing. So that also enters into the equation, but all things being equal, and they never are, I would hold on to Atu Ratu and be more willing to trade William Dufour if you know I had no choice and had to deal one of them. But again, I would be more comfortable dealing Ratu if I knew it guaranteed us the player we really covet in a trade. So we have to see how it all plays out. But a, a very interesting question. So Matt from Massapequa, thank you very much for that question. I think it was a good one. And everybody, please feel free to, uh, in fact, I'm going to put a poll up on the YouTube site asking this very question. It's going to go live. Uh, so look for it. And I, I'd love to hear your votes and, and your opinions on which way you feel it should go.
We have got a lot more to discuss on today's show. We're going to talk about your response uh, and your opinions on the fisherman jerseys, the Islanders retro re re reverse retro jerseys. We'll have that. We'll have a whole lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl system to basketball, World Cup soccer, and of course the NHL. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Look, Islanders. Friday night in Arizona to take on the Coyotes. Check out the odds and let's see if your knowledge of the Islanders might be able to help you earn a little extra money. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So the votes are in. The votes are in, and here is the final poll result. It's pretty split, I have to say. And... It's it to me. Here's here's the deal. Thirty six percent of you said I love the fisherman jersey. Nineteen percent said I like them. So that's fifty five percent. Majority of people favorable toward the fisherman jersey. Nineteen percent said they're okay, not great, not terrible, and twenty seven percent said thanks but no thanks. And the comments were interesting. Uh, Frank from North Patchog, I did like the colors of the fisherman jerseys, but that's about it. That logo is a grim reminder of that snake Spano and what he tried when he tried to buy the Islanders, and he couldn't. It made us the laughing stock of the league in those days. That logo should be deep six to Davy Jones' locker, never to be seen again. Why bring up a dark time in Islanders history? Then we have John G, who says, Hey, Gil, I've been here since 72, and I love the fisherman jersey. I mostly love that my kids, who are 32 and 27, also love it. A lot of fans may hate the fisherman jersey because of the fish stick chants, but do we really care what fans of a team that won one Stanley Cup since World War II really think? Seeing Romanov in the fisherman jersey reminds me of Darius Kasparaitis. Anyway, let's go Islanders. Uh, so, it, you know, there are different, different opinions. Uh, Jeff writes in, hate them, although they are slightly better than the original ones. Uh, Skiing Gator on YouTube, burn them. Nothing but bad mojo from these things. Uh Keith writes in, I don't care for them, not for the reason that it reminds me of the 90s inept teams, but because I just don't care for the fisherman logo choice. Would have much preferred the Montauk Lighthouse. It's just a dumb logo choice and design. So, you know, there's a, a lot of opinions out there. One more uh, that I'll read, Frankie. Uh, Hi, Gil, it's about business, and I understand. However, they represent failure, embarrassment, and futility. I get the past is the past, and I get that young fans like them, but I feel it's disgraceful to have it represent this once proud, greatest ever franchise. Sorry. So most of the comments were people who were not as much in favor of the jerseys, but the vote overall, 55% of you either loved or liked them, and 40, uh, basically 46% basically said, you know, I guess they round up some of these numbers, either they're okay or thanks, but no thanks. So by vote, 
of the listeners of the Locked On Islanders podcast. The Fisherman jerseys get a, a mild seal of approval, and uh, it's good to know what fans are thinking. Wanted to just touch briefly on a particular player who I think just isn't getting as much attention as perhaps I think he deserves. And that's Scotty Mayfield. You know, Mayfield is in the last year of his contract, and it's a very team-friendly contract. And I would like to see the Islanders try to re-sign Scotty Mayfield. Yeah, he's a third-pair defenseman. And, you know, that being said, he's one of the better third-pair defensemen out there. He'll help you on the penalty kill. He plays effective minutes, and this year at least, he is contributing more offense than he has in the past. You look at the numbers for Mayfield, four goals, eight points in 30 games. That's about a 10-goal, you know, 20-point pace. He's a plus player, which is not always what you see in your third-pair defenseman. And he's been able to play with a number of different partners on that third pair and come up big. He gives you ice time. He is smart with the puck most of the time. Not saying he's the ideal player, but for if they can get him back at a reasonable contract, and I think they can, maybe, you know, two years at, or let's say three years at $8 million, something around that range, I think that would be a good number to re-sign Mayfield, give you some continuity. I wouldn't go past three years. I'd even prefer a two-year deal. But to me, Scotty Mayfield is a, a solid player, a good investment, a good Islander, and someone who I think in two or three years, because he doesn't rely on his speed, in order to be effective, <laughs> I think that he would be a good choice uh, where he'll age well. I don't think you're going to see Scott Mayfield just fall off a cliff and be less effective than he has been all of a sudden in a dramatic way. I think at age 31, 32, 33, he'll be solid and uh, assuming he stays healthy, but Mayfield gives you minutes. He's consistent. He's giving you more offense in this season than he has in recent years. He seems to like playing under Lane Lambert and Lane Lambert's system. And overall, I think he's a good guy to have around. So um, just wanted to talk a little bit about Scott Mayfield and, and where he's at. But I hope that the New York Islanders will keep Mayfield around and sign him to an extension at the end of this year or sooner so that you don't risk having him hit the open market and, you know, possibly get an offer from another team that he can't refuse. We'll see. You know, it's possible that because uh, he signed such a team-friendly deal last time that Mayfield may be looking for a few extra dollars. And I'm, I'm okay not overpaying him. If he wants to test the market, if he really thinks he's worth more than the Islanders will offer him, be my guest. And if he can get it, good for him. But to me, he's a steady, solid player, and I would love to have him back. Coming up, we have our Islanders' birthday of the day, and then uh, an important parting thought. Our Islanders' birthday of the day, a player who ended up being exiled by the team to the AHL for cap purposes. We'll talk about that and a lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by the NHTSA. So you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks, and a few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home, okay? It's no big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. 
Everyone knows the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And, uh, well, Monday was the 37th uh, birthday of former Islanders winger Andrew Ladd, the Maple Ridge British Columbia native, a first-round pick, fourth overall of the Carolina Hurricanes in 2004, and ended up joining the Canes in 05-06 for 29 games. Stayed with Carolina for three seasons, moved on to the Chicago Blackhawks, the Atlanta Thrashers, the Winnipeg Jets, back to the Blackhawks, and then in 2016-2017, joined the New York Islanders, spent two full seasons with the Isles, and then in 2018-2019 started, he got hurt, ended up in the minors for some time, and then became pretty much a cap casualty who is no longer living up to his contract. He is on LTIR right now with the Arizona Coyotes, who the Islanders uh, ended up, he ended up playing for Arizona in 21-22 uh, in, in a trade that helped the Islanders' salary cap. His best year with the Isles by far, 2016-2017, his first year with the team, 78 games, 23 goals, 31 points, uh, and 45 penalty minutes for his career. Uh, Ladd reached the 1,000-game mark, 1,001, 256 goals, 550 points, 615 penalty minutes. He did add 65 playoff games, was a member of the Chicago Blackhawks team that won the Cup in 2010 and has nine goals in the playoffs, 18 points, and 48 penalty minutes in those 65 games. We go back. And look at one of Andrew Ladd's better games as an Islander. December 27th, 2016 at the Barkley Center in Brooklyn. Islanders and the Washington Capitals. Braden Holt be the goalie for the Caps. Yarrow Slav Halak in goal for the Isles. And it was the Islanders on the board first. Cal Clutterbuck, his third. From Nikolai Kuhleman and Ryan Strom at 8.02. Isles up one to nothing. But Justin Williams ties it for the Caps. His eighth. From Alexander Ovechkin and Dmitry Orlov at 13:24, we are even at one and one after one period. In the second, our Islanders' birthday of the day, Andrew Ladd gives the Isles the lead, his sixth of the year. Thomas Hickey and Alan Quine with the helpers at 14:03. 40 minutes into this one, Isles up by a goal. But in the third, Alexander Ovechkin ties the game at two. His 16th from Justin Williams and Evgeny Kuznetsov. But that goal coming at 117, Andrew Ladd. Our Islanders' birthday of the day answers his 7th from Alan Quine and Thomas Hickey at 441. Isles have a 3-2 lead. Then Anders Lee unassisted his 13th at 524. Makes it a two-goal Islander lead. Andre Burakovsky. Scores at 13.05 for the Caps. Jay Beagle and Matt Niskanen with the assist. Islanders go on to hold on for a 4-3 win for the Islanders. Halak with 31 saves. But for our Islanders' birthday of the day, Andrew Ladd, he had two goals. He was a plus two. The goals came on two shots. And even though he only had 13 minutes and 19 seconds of ice time, a productive day for Andrew Ladd. So. Hoping he's feeling better, Andrew Ladd, 37 years old on uh, Monday. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. You know, we've talked about this schedule, this road trip, and the schedule between now and the break. And the Islanders basically have a very important game Friday night in Arizona. And I'll tell you why. 
And we will preview this game tomorrow, so make sure you join us for that show. But this is the Coyotes. First of all, the Islanders need some revenge. They were shut out by the Coyotes earlier this season at home. Second of all, this is the easiest game on the schedule between now and really New Year's. And this is the kind of game you got to bank those two points. You're going up against a team that is struggling this year, although they are playing better than many people expected. You got a point on the first game of this road trip, and it's a five-game road trip. We wanted to get six points in the six games between the game in Boston and the holiday break, which comes after the home game against the Panthers. This is the team you should beat without question. You get these two points, you're at three points, and you still have four games left to try to add to that total. And it puts you in a really good position. I want to see this team be more consistent. And to be consistent, you got to win the games you're supposed to win. Let's hope that the Islanders can do that. And again, we will preview that game in depth on the Friday show. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That does it for this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.